plan was to take a year off, possibly relocate somewhere and, and travel down in South America. And as I researched the trip and saw what was involved with sort of shutting down your life, and um, the more research I did, I started reading about Africa, uh, some other guys that had done this trip, and just really got hooked on it, and it's like, I gotta go. I, I don't want to go sit on a beach. This isn't about that. And, um, this isn't retirement for me by any means, and, and I don't know exactly where what will be left when I get back. But this has turned into to be a, a very important thing for me, and, and I think it's you know it's worth it. So, do you have a do you have a general route mapped out for yourself, or are you just going to kind of ad lib this thing? The basic route is to touch the the top and the bottom of the major land masses, working my way south and then and then east coming around. The spots in between are, are dictated by who I meet along the way, contacts I've picked up, and just kind of go with flow. My original plan was to go from here to Alaska, up to Prudhoe Bay, and kind of use that as a, a kind of a shakedown run. In uh, August would have been sort of my last month to do that. Everything going on with um, just the sale of the house and this and that, I wasn't able to really get away. So now it's it's going to go from, from here to Seattle, and we're gonna, I'm going to go straight down to visit some friends in LA and then do that as my shakedown run. And then from there go into Baja where it's warmer and then, uh, spend some time there and then ferry over to the mainland of Mexico and uh, maybe stop and do some, you know, take some Spanish and then ultimately Central America and then, and then, uh, ship from Panama city and then into Colombia, Bogota, and then start heading South to, uh, Ushuaia, the, the tip of South America. I'd like to get up into Brazil a little bit and then ultimately, you know, ship out of Buenos Aires to to Cape Town and then head up the eastern route of of Africa. Do you know how to read a map? I do know how to read a map. Uh, my my GPS skills are are lacking and uh when I decided to do this, you know, I, I was really, you know, I was going to take, you know, get a gun hole in Spanish and, you know, nail some of this stuff down, but, you know, the the process of dismantling your life is has taken a lot more work than I they anticipated. And, <laughs> um, getting rid of everything you own is very liberating, but I mean it really takes some time. Is a lot of work. We accumulate a lot of stuff, don't we? We do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so so uh, you know a lot of this is going to be um, you know I'm leaving in a few weeks and you know do, do I feel like I'm ready to go? It's like you know no, not at all. But I don't think I ever would. You know, there's always one more thing for the bike. There's only one more piece of gear. Um, I think a lot of it's going to be, um, you know, like you said, trial by fire and get on the road and, and figure it out, or you, I'll just never leave. So what are the logistics in, uh, in shipping a bike? Um, it's all airship nowadays. You know, I think 90% of the time uh, it's just more efficient and costs, um, cost-wise makes sense. It's a small hop, obviously, from Panama City to Columbia, and, and I, I don't think you really have to, they just put the bike on the plane. Um, Buenos Aires and some of the the bigger flights, you know, you have to crate up your bike, you know, tear it down a little bit, get the battery out, uh, fluids. There's one thing I have heard that over and over again is is make sure your bike is at its destination before you get on the plane and, and get there. You don't want to get there first and find out because then they have you by the short hair, so to speak. Right. It's, uh, and then you're you're paying fines and fees and add-ons and if you've got a um, uh, less than stellar shipper. 